hi year 11 and welcome to your feedback for your second assessment task and um, we're going to do the feedback in quite a similar way um, so you should have this printed in front of you your response in front of you as well um, and we're going to work our way through this with you pausing to complete the activities as we go um, I wanted to start with a bit of a recap of, I suppose, what was the content of this assessment task. Now, the content was based around the RBA macro credential policy, monetary policy and economic indicators. All of this has some crossover into HSC. Now, a lot of the times we take it into further depth um, next year, but it's a really great starting point in terms of content that is going to come up for HSC. Arguably, more importantly, or just as importantly, are the skills that this assessment task through both part A and part B um, should have been developed. So skills such as research and investigation. So this was about you going um, and finding um, the information. A lot of you did some great bibliographies in part A. Um, another skill um, was this use of the stimulus and drawing out um, meaning and, and inferring ideas from stimulus. Another skill that is a really important one that, that comes through in all sections of the paper um, for HSE is to be able to relate economic concepts. Um, and this is something that we probably still need to work on as well as applying the real. And I'll keep talking about this idea of the real. And the real is what is actually going on in the economy at the time. So um, for this assessment, what monetary policy decisions have actually taken place? Not talking theoretically, but talking about what has happened in reality. So these are the skills that, should, um, that we should have worked on. We, we certainly haven't perfected them, but it's only our second assessment task along that um, progression towards the end point, which is that HSC exam. So let's start with part A. Part A, um, your handing component. Overall, guys, great job. Um, presentations were engaging. Most of you clearly explained the content, which was excellent. And most of your reference lists had good variety and depth. Um, this is great to carry through to the HSC and is a skill that comes up um, for those wanting to go to university as well. One thing in our areas to develop here is that you need to take note of the marking criteria. One of the dot points was integration of relevant and extensive economic data and research. Many students gave very theoretical style responses or presentations. Um, it, hit the, it hit the criteria points where it talked about role and function but you didn't use the evidence or the data, okay, um, when talking about stances or talking about um, perspectives. So that was one area that we probably could have taken um, a little bit further in our work, which we should have been informed from for the marking criteria. So the main lesson there is make sure that you use that marking criteria to drive your response when you're creating it. So your first pause point. What skills did Part A help you to develop and how do you think these will help you in the HSC? Really have a think about what you did. Okay, most of you did really well and you should be happy with it. But what skills did it provide you and how do you think this is going to help you move into the HSC course? All right, pause now and do that. All right, hopefully you've reflected on Part A. Now we're going to move on to Part B. I just wanted to include very quickly um, what your paper should have looked like. I timed myself. It took me 1 minute 12 to annotate the question, annotate the stimulus, and really have a look at this graph as well. And if you notice here, I annotated in particularly the most recent occurrences. Okay, um, and often with graphs, it can give you large scale trends, but also we need to be looking at this idea of um, recent happenings as well. So have a look at your sheet now and think, do, did I actually work with this question sheet and did I work with the stimulus as much as I should have, okay? All right, what we're going to do is, is we're going to do the criteria by section of the marking criteria, but we're going to deal with these first two together. This one was really about the content. Did you have accurate content on monetary policy? And did you show the impact through indicators? Indicators such as the inflation level, employment or unemployment, 
consumption, wage growth, any of these types of things. These were just examples for you. Guys, we were lacking judgment. It was not clear a lot of the time whether we were saying it was effective or ineffective, whether the impact had been positive or negative. But your judgment had to be based on the real policy, which actually comes down and links into this idea here. Okay, this one here about relevant economic data and research. So although they're separate, if you did, if you judged, okay, theoretically, you weren't quite doing it in the right way. So essentially your response should have been written in past tense. This would have allowed you to show how past policy has impacted the Australian economy. So stating things like due to the reduction in the cash rate as of August 2016. Okay, that was the last time that the rate was dropped. Using data, so from August 2016 until currently, um, 2018, there has been a neutral stance. And judging that, you need to judge what has already taken place. But you need to provide the data, okay, on these areas to show judgment. If you're not giving economic growth figures or inflation figures, you are not able to prove your judgment. So have a look at your response and think about these two questions. What was your main line of judgment? What was it based on? So was it based on real or was it just theoretical? Was your judgment saying, yes, it's positive or, or maybe no, it hasn't done quite what it needed to do? And did you accompany your judgment with an idea of to what extent? It's been ineffective. It's been highly effective, moderately. These are the types of ideas that should be driving your judgment. Have a go at thinking about these and answering these now, please. Um, I suppose to go along with that um, is this idea of evaluative language. And I've included some appropriate language for stage five to six. Um, not all of these are economic, okay, um, but you can have a look in here and think about, you could have used um, the idea of a considerable influence, a um, fundamental to, a crucial factor, most notably. This language really could have helped drive your evaluation in the response. So did you use indicators and link them to your judgment? i.e. did the data prove, okay, did the data prove your judgment accurate? Have a think about that. And if you can write yes, great, maybe write the example. But if you can't, maybe write why you didn't include it. Um, I'd also like you to have a look in your response and think about how happy you are. Um, sorry, before we do that, what are the indicators that you used? So going back to this criteria point, okay, and remember these are just examples of indicators that you could have used. What indicators and what data did you actually use with your response? And then have a little think about how happy are you with your use of evidence to support judgment? So again, this is this idea of showing a relationship between two components. Due to the neutral stance, this is the effect and this is how I can prove this effect through a piece of data. Have a bit of a rating there. Have a go at this page. Pause now if you need. The next criteria was on SST, economic terms, concepts, relationships and theories. So this bit here, terms and concepts, SST, this bit down here is a little bit more complex. So overall, I was fairly happy with the terms and concepts used. Um, and what needs to be our focus moving forward is the exploration of economic concepts and further connections to show economic relationships. So this is one of these key skills that we need to develop moving towards the HSC. Ideas such as economic injections, so thinking about your circular flow, consumption and investment, could have been linked with expansionary and neutral monetary policy. So thinking about how the policy stance would encourage consumption, investment and borrowing, which in turn will add to or stimulate economic growth and GDP. You would need to explore the how, and you might even want to add in here, you would also need to be able to prove it. 
So this is where by saying with an expansionary or neutral stance, okay, we see the encouragement of consumption and borrowing. I want to know how big the effect has been. So has economic growth um, risen, okay, taking into consideration external factors and obviously time lags as well. Having a look at your response and your response should be open next to you, I want you to make a list of the top 10 most important economic terms and concepts you used within your response. Okay, very simple, terms and concepts. Once you've done that, I want you to think about how you've shown the relationship. So this happy scale, happy or sad scale here, is not about this. It's not about terms and concepts. I've already told you we're probably at this guy for terms and concepts. Good job. I want you to really think about how you showed connections and relationships and where on this scale do you think you are. And remember, you might want to annotate, this is a transferable skill that we want us to develop um, so that it informs our um, attempts at our first HSC task. All right, pause now and have a go at this. All right, criteria point four, as I've already kind of mentioned, was this idea about data and research, so what I call real. So whenever you see real, if I've written that in your in-text, this is what I'm talking about, as well as your use of stimulus. So to start, um, this was one area that I felt was one of the weaker sections in responses. Um, many responses did not include extensive evidence of past or current monetary policy, and the response needed to be driven by this. Okay, so the real policy needed to be the foundation of the response. Um, neutral and expansionary monetary policy should have been the basis of your judgment. Many of you were talking theoretically. Okay. For use of stimulus, I think that the first piece of stimulus, that written piece of stimulus, was used far more effectively than the second. The wage growth um, graph should have helped you, and, and I gave it to you to help you, um, because it should have helped you link to the current neutral stance, as slow wage growth has had a deflationary pressure in the economy, meaning wages have not been pushing inflation up, hence inflation's been low, and therefore the neutral stance that we've seen over the past 18 months. So due to this deflationary pressure, inflation has been below, if only slightly, um, below the target. So hence the neutral stance. The, the RBA is waiting okay, for something else in the economy to pick up um, and stimulate that inflation rate. You then needed to take this concept of wage growth and inflation and the target and show the implications of the current stance, which has been since August 2016. Um, you should have used indicators. And this is, I suppose, this section here is kind of showing you how you have to integrate content, real, and evidence. Okay, and it's not easy, and I fully appreciate that, guys, but it's something that we've got to work towards. So what I have here for you is a bit of a sample. Now it's kind of, I, I took a little bit from a particular student's work and I kind of amended it. It's by no means perfect. We could always um, work on something um, and refri refine it, but I don't want to show you something that's perfect either because it was a exam style question. What I want you to do is, is I want you to pause now. I want you to read this section um, and I want you to think about what is this sample doing? Is there real? Is there data? Um, is there content? And then underneath, I think what, what I'm going to ask you to do is, is to think where should this paragraph go from here? So have a read of it now, annotate it. If you'd like me to go through with you, ask me um, in person. Okay, but pause now and have a go at that for me. <clears throat> okay, last criteria point, which is on structure. Well done, okay? It's obvious that a lot of you have done lots of work in, in 7 to 10 on your essay or extended response structure. One thing to note, and I suppose the one bit of limitation I will put on there, is that it is really important that you think about the length of your paragraphs. Just be mindful that in exams we're often rushing and we're often just writing down and we're trying to get everything that's in our brain onto that piece of paper. Just be careful that your paragraphs don't go too long, okay? A use of an indent may help, okay? 
Or if you're stopping and thinking because you're going to move on to a next on to another idea, maybe that stop and think time is an indicator to you that it needs to be a new paragraph. But overall, our responses were fairly logical um, and they all made sense, which was great. So where do we go from here? Well, feedback has to be this process and it's not just about me talking at you, which I hope that um, has been achieved through you completing those activities. But you need to think about what do you want to ask me? Okay, I'm dedicating a whole lesson to this, which is great, but it needs to be this 360, this idea that we are um, communicating with each other. From this, you really need to think about what are your goals moving forward in economics, okay? Um, and you can think about this yourself with your other um, courses. You might want to annotate something in here. If you want to achieve that goal, you've got to do something about it. And that something about it is your work ethic, your homework, your study. Um, because it's really important that we are taking proactive steps and measures um, to help us get to this target that we've set ourselves. Just a bit of a reminder, and I suppose it adds to this idea that feedback is not something that we do at one point in time. You've got a feedback um, video for task one. This is obviously your feedback video for task two. You're going to use both of these, okay, um, in the lead up to task three. We're going to sit down and we're going to make some goals for task three as well. It's a very different task, okay, it's a formal exam, multiple choice, short answer, extended response. So it's much more HSE-like, but we need to use task one and task two to inform our prep. If we don't use this, and you've got them on video, so you've got no excuse, sorry, but if we don't use these in our prep, we're essentially not using every tool or every aspect that we have available to us. We're going to set goals, and the reality is, guys, that sometimes we meet our goals and sometimes we don't, but... Task three is not, oh, sweet, wash our hands, end of prelim. Task three is our biggest stepping stone into the HSC course, okay? So think about this. Think about that idea of at the start of what skills have I, have I mastered or what skills do I still need to develop because this task is to help you get down here, okay? But we've got to refer to it and we've got to use it. As always, if you have any questions or issues, please um, speak to me in person and we will sort that out. But I hope that this video has really helped you to look at your second task and think about what you've done well in and what areas you want to work in moving forward. All right, guys. Thanks as always.